Hi, do you know how to trade options to maximize return of S&P 500 ETF? We'll show you the wheel strategy to multiply profits from S&P 500 index. If you enjoy my videos about investing in US stocks, please like and share my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. We'll talk about five key points today. One, why invest in S&P 500 ETF. Two, which S&P 500 ETF is most suitable for the wheel strategy. Three, three steps to the wheel strategy. Four, expect the returns of trading the wheel strategy with SPY. Five, differences between holding SPY ETF and the wheel strategy. Most experienced traders recognize Standard & Poor's 500 index as the most iconic index fund in the world. It tracks the performance of 500 most profitable companies in the U.S. stock market. Companies included in the S&P 500 make up around 80% of the total market capitalization. It's widely regarded as the best gauge of large-cap U.S. equities and a favorite among passive investors. Most people expect an annual return of 9% from buying and holding ETFs that track the S&P 500. There are three popular ETFs that track the S&P 500, which are SPY, IVV, and VOO. The three ETFs have different tracking accuracies, different management fees, so you might wonder which one is most suitable for the wheel strategy. Since the wheel strategy uses options to boost the returns on investing the underlying for the long term, we choose the best ETF by the volume of options traded for each ETF. SPY has exponentially more options liquidity than the other two, so we will choose SPY as the symbol for trading the wheel strategy. The wheel strategy is a sequence of repeatable steps that we can use to combine selling options with holding stocks to buy low and sell high the SPY ETF. The three steps of the SPY option strategy depend on the number of shares you hold. Step 1 sell a cash secured put when holding zero shares. Step two, sell a strangle when holding 100 shares. Step three, sell two call options when holding 200 shares. When we do not own any SPY stock, we can sell a cash secured put that expires in 30 days. If SPY does not drop below the strike price after 30 days, we will collect all the premium from the trade. If SPY price drops below the strike price, we will be assigned 100 shares of SPY at a discount. Then we move on to the next step. Now we own 100 shares, we can sell a strangle that expires in 30 days, which is a combination of a cash secured put and a covered call. If the SPY price stays within the two strike prices after 30 days, we collect all the premium from selling options. If the SPY rises beyond the call strike, we will be forced to sell the 100 shares at a higher price. Then we move back to step 1. If the SPY price drops below the put strike, we get to purchase another 100 shares at an even lower price. Then we move forward to step 3. Now we own 200 shares of SPY ETF, we can sell two covered call options at the same time to earn twice the amount of premium. If the ETF price doesn't rise after 30 days, we collect all the premium. If the SPY price increases beyond the call strike, we will sell 200 shares at a high price and move back to step 1. If we look at the price history of SPY, we can see this ETF price rarely goes beyond the Bollinger Bands. So we can use the Bollinger Bands to set the strike prices for selling puts and calls. We can use step 2 to estimate the wheel option strategy returns with SPY. If we assume the fluctuations of SPY rarely exceed our Bollinger Bands, the premium collected from put and call is around $1,200 per month. Since we set aside 77,000 cash to purchase 200 shares of SPY, the monthly return from the premium is 1.6%, which is around 19% per year. If buying and holding shares of SPY can expect 9% average return a year, then we can add 19% more 
from the premium of the wheel strategy, tripling our annual returns on investing in SPY. Now it's your turn to use the bullish value stocks to find undervalued blue chip stocks to trade the wheel strategy.